Hello, welcome to Vlogmas Day of the Day. That is the 20th. Yes, not long left, only four days of Vlogmas left. And I'm sure you're all looking forward to seeing what we've got for you in the new year. Because I'm sure we have stuff. We've, me and Dan have actually been talking about the future of what to do as a channel over the next year. I don't know if we explicitly said over the next year, but sort of plans for in the new year at least. So, I thought I'd talk about sort of what my plans are for the future. Mainly, then, as a nun. <laughs> I mean, sort of aspirations. What I would like to do. There's three things. Three things. One, I have a novel published. Now, as many of you know, I try to be a writer. I haven't been successful thus far. Uh, as with, well, NaNoWriMo didn't work out, and I submit short stories to various magazine publications regularly and get turned down regularly. So that hasn't been working out for me. You know, I, I really love writing. I, I think it's one of the few things I'm really good at. Well, not really good at, but sort of... It's the one thing where I have the most potential. And, you know, I'm a little bit better than your average bear. Not by much, but a little bit. So, I'm always working on ideas. My main love so my main drive in life is of creating worlds and sort of pop, creating ideas and people. It's mainly what I think about it. I, I think everyone sort of does, thinks through ideas in different ways. Everyone has different focuses. And I, I sort of think in terms of worlds, cohesive systems. I was actually talking about, that, to the, about this with Dan a long a while ago. We think in my dreams that Dan doesn't have, and I would like actually to know if other people have as well. I often dream in architecture. I, I have rec recurring places in my dreams, sort of cities, towns, b bizarre three-dimensional structures that I've dreamt about for years and years and years, and sort of, I've kind of got this internal map of all these places, and some of them are populated, some of them are not, it's all manner of strange places, and I, I th that's sort of very much how my ideas work, is of places, people, interlocking systems. You know, when I think about creating a world, I think about not just, here's a cool idea, how about, um, you know, post-apocalyptic wasteland with fast cars and gasoline because it's Australia. I think, how can a f how would mankind come back from a post-nuclear society? What would be the ramifications of, say, an increased cancer rate, more mutations? that's more interesting to me and that's sort of where my mind works so like an idea I was working through the other day because I often come up with ideas and I have thought about sort of doing it as a graphic novel type thing so I'm not that good an artist as you may know but so you know I drew this gentleman and mm. um, and sort of I began... He was a character starting point. He was a character in this idea of a sort of incre incredibly ritualized, very inefficient, sort of nobility-driven um, space navy. Spavy? Um, defending the Earth against alien invaders very much thinking about um, la the anime Last Exile and some of the designs for their ships there, but um, in space. And sort of, this man has sort of risen through the ranks, he's a member of the aristocracy, and sort of how he's, how the, um, the rigors of war interact with sort of the, uh, the slowness and the stodginess of bureaucracy and aristocracy and heritage. Very much um, like how the confrontation that happened during the First World War, and sort of how you know the British Army kind of got its ass handed to it because all the generals were aristocrats who didn't know what they were doing, and that's sort of where this character was hit, and sort of the overt expectations of the ge armchair generals back on Earth, and then there's this guy who's actually commanding this fleet and having to deal with the practicalities all the while dealing with all this pomp and ceremony. So, you know, like there's a dress uniform for all manner of occasions. There's, um, and like, uh, officers are required to change uniform before battle. 
So if they're ambushed, all the officers have to disappear and change into these ridiculous outfits before they can start fighting. And the kind of ridiculous ridiculousness that would impede that, and I, I, I felt that was interesting. So that's a, was a, that was an idea I was working on recently, and that takes me to my point number two, um, aspiration number two, number two. Uh, I want to create and produce a graphic novel or series, but or comic book series, you know, limited run. I'm while you know, as I said in my. Uh, uh, in my video about my education, I was told never to pick up a pencil again. I'm still trying to teach myself to draw. I still, I still find it necessary as a thing to do. I don't often enjoy it. In fact, it, yeah, a lot of the times it's very frustrating for me because I'm not that good. But I keep at it because I feel the need to. Same reason with thing with writing. I don't feel that good. <laughs> a lot of the time, I don't feel that good at it. But keep working at it and now I've got to the point where sometimes what I write I think is really good sort of hey this could be published good I may have read it I can't remember if I've read it. Uh, there's the the opening to um, the fantasy story I'm working on uh, I just call it Kendra's Tale at the moment the opening to that the first chapter I think is really good uh, and there's some later bits that are also really good and there's also some bits in that that are really bad and I'm sort of hammering those out. But yeah, I I want to make a graphic novel series for the same reason I want to you know, be a, an author. It's just a different way of showing a world and I feel there are certain stories you can tell visually that you just can't tell in a written form. Like, um, there was a story I, I sort of... There's a couple of stories I've worked out a while ago that uh, fit that very quiet mode. I often think of Japanese film in this way sort of the very quiet, very little dialogue, very much about sort of quiet visuals and human moments. So think of um, Ozo's films. The first was another science fiction. The best science fiction? No, one was just science fiction. So there's this very quiet s story about a person living as kind of a hermit on this desert planet. So they've kind of got this yeah, so this this person just leaking out, eking out an existence on the edge of this world, and sort of I, the way I sort of imagined it was that it was this young woman who was raised by a monastic community, and when she matured, she had to um, move away from the monastic community, but she still maintains ties. So I kind of imagined it it really being sort of a, a series of uh, her visiting people just this one story of like she goes to the monastery and sort of gives them some crops that she's grown or whatever and then maybe you sort of talk to people in this sort of very quiet conversations then they ask her to take her something to say a hermit and it's sort of this very quiet thing about desolate landscapes and I, and I found that kind of I, I still think that's an interesting idea I just wish I was a good enough artist to do that properly and I actually really started looking into Mobius's work for that. Uh, while his work is often very busy, I think it just depicts landscapes in, in an alien way that's quite interesting. Uh, the second idea was originally sort of meant to be a short story, but upon working upon it, I sort of found that it didn't work. Uh, it was a, as in a written format, it would work better visually. And um, the idea is a. Uh, this sort of rogue, sort of during um, in medieval Japan, yes, I'm a bit obsessed with with Japan. Uh, comes across an abandoned temple, and sleeps there. You know, changes his dirty rags for old priest vestments, that kind of thing. And then these villagers come up and like, oh, so you're the new priest we've been expecting. Great. Um, and he kind of bullshits his way through being a priest, and. It's sort of this quiet tale of him sort of... He sort of lied about being a priest, so he's stuck in this temple running it, sort of repairing it to fulfil these expectations because people are giving him food and money and such. And then there are like these old guys who kind of figure out his scam and kind of join him. Because <laughs> they have no family and they just sort of join him and it's their kind... Of, it's kind of like a quiet comedy where... Sort of the villagers know he's not the real priest, but 
they need they want a priest and needed need someone to run the temple so they kind of guilt him into doing it and it's sort of it's a little, a little quiet comedy I, I quite like and um, I've actually sort of been experimenting recently with a, a sumi is that how you pronounce it Japanese um, ink painting um, you know, it was also it's also Chinese as well the Chinese and Japanese ink painting and I, I think that might be an interesting way to do it they don't generally do figures in that but there might be something to it this is a bit different from the others but I, I feel this is a long-standing aspiration of mine. I want to work towards a doctorate in uh, literature and basically I'd like to stay in education as long as possible. You know, I'm 24 but I haven't got a degree yet. I have actually recently tried to um, apply for a new degree course but uh, don't worry I'm not leaving you lot, I'll still be doing all this. But um, I'd like to one day work towards a doctorate because I feel I'm intellectually capable enough of it and it's the kind of thing I would like to do. I, you know, I've, I'm also the kind of person who try and get multiple degrees, not for the sake of having a degree, just because I like studying at that level. You know, I'd like to study linguistics at that level. I'd like to study history at that level. Um, sociology, philosophy, politics, all manner of things that I'm fascinated with. I want to study at a higher level because there's a definite limit on what you can learn on the internet. Um, anthropology, archaeology, <laughs> um, you know, the list goes on. And maybe one day I'll have the opportunity to study all those subjects. But first I need to get that degree first, and then work towards a master's and then a doctorate. It's not as, as um, perhaps, it's not as artistic as the others, but I, it's just something I feel I need to feel good about myself, you know. It's, I know it's silly to put worth into a piece of paper, but it's a way of saying, you know, I can understand things at this level. Right now, the highest grade I've got a B, is a B.Tech in art. And that just says, this guy's a failure to me. I Maybe I'm a bit biased, but whatever. So yeah, I hope that sort of gives you an idea of what I'm kind of bumbling through in my life. <laughs> uh, so thank you for watching. Dan's up again tomorrow with something else. Arrivederci.